During Prohibition, the Great Lakes region hosted its share of organized crime, maybe more than its share. But where did those gangsters go to relax? Life as a gangster wasn't easy. First, you had to line up a getaway driver, then club the guards, and finally, escape with the money. It was exhausting work. So after a long day of robbing banks, it was good to unwind and head up north for a little downtime. I think a lot of gangsters came north for vacationing. That's author and retired professor Robert Knapp. He has spent years researching gangster activity throughout the Great Lakes region. His latest book is titled Gangsters Up North. One gangster getaway was this lodge. The Little Bohemia Lodge in Manitowash, Wisconsin, very close to the Upper Peninsula Michigan border, was a place where gangsters decided to go for some rest and relaxation. In 1934, the FBI was tipped off that John Dillinger and Babyface Nelson were going to be at the Little Bohemia. The G-Men saw an opportunity, but after an epic shootout, all the gangsters got away. So Little Bohemia goes on the, the map of gangster activities as being one of the biggest fiascos in terms of the, the uh, federal uh, officers trying to catch these big name gangsters. Damage from that shootout is still visible today at the Little Bohemia Lodge. According to Knapp, gangsters went up north for more than just R&R. &R. In 1925, Michigan got its first commercially viable oil well, kicking off an era of oil exploration and production. So what happened then was that gangsters from Detroit were looking for a way to launder money, and oil is a perfect way to launder money. Sam Garfield had invested in speakeasies, gambling, and prostitution in Detroit and he persuaded the Purple Gang, Detroit's mob led mainly by the four Bernstein brothers, to put their money in oil wells around Clare, Michigan. Oil speculators, including gangsters, began visiting Clare and staying at the Doherty Hotel. There was a very high stakes game going all the time, uh, including uh, the Catholic priest at the time in the basement of the hotel. There's always a great relationship between the townsfolks and the, the mafia or the Purple Gang. Richard Doherty is a fourth generation owner of the Doherty Hotel. The hallways of the hotel are lined with photos and news articles about gangsters and the oil boom. This whole gangster era and with the hotel starting about the same time, you know, that's American history and we, uh, we do embrace it. The Doherty Hotel was the scene of one of the most dramatic events in Claire's history. This is where the uh, murder of Isaiah Lebov took place in uh, 1938, May 14th. Isaiah Lebov was a mob attorney and fixer for the Purple Gang, and he handled their oil investments around Claire. Lebov had teamed up in the oil business with a guy named Jack Livingston, but Livingston was an alcoholic and eventually Lebov cut him out of the business. Meanwhile, Ray Bernstein had been sent to prison for murder, and Ray's brothers hired Lebov to get him out. Lebov tried for two years, but then he gave up and returned his retainer fee to the Purple Gang, who were not happy with Lebov's services. The story in Claire was that uh, the Bernstein brothers wanted revenge on Lebov and had enlisted Livingston as the agent. On the night of May 14, 1938, Lebov was having a drink with a couple of friends in the lounge of the Doherty Hotel. So Jack walks into the room, stands here in front of the booth, pulls out his 38, blam, 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 shoots Lebov three times. Livingston then went upstairs to his room at the Doherty. So the chief of police goes up there, knocks on the door. Jack opens the door. Jack says, did I get him? And the police chief says, you got him, Jack. 
In a trial that captured the attention of people in Clare, Livingston was found not guilty by reason of insanity and set free. In the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, there was a long parade of gangsters in Michigan, famous and not so famous. John Hamilton is the only gangster that I came across that was actually born up north. Joe Zerilli and Black Bill Toko were mafia figures in Detroit and bought land on the eastern side of Higgins Lake. Perhaps the most famous gangster to ever visit Claire was Meyer Lansky. He was a big time gangster out of New York uh, who uh, worked with the mafia, especially in the early 30s, Lucky Luciano, and was part of Murder Incorporated, the murder for hire operation. In the 1950s, Lansky was heavily invested in casino operations in Cuba. But when Fidel Castro came to power and shut down the casinos, Lansky lost a fortune. Sam Garfield came to his rescue. And Sam said, well, you need to invest in Michigan oil. So he did. So this rig, this pumper, is very similar. In fact, it might even be one of the ones that Meyer Lansky owned and uh, gained about $25,000 a year in income from the, uh, the oil wells in this part of, of Clare County. Of course, not all the amazing stories of gangsters up north are true. There have been lots of tall tales and rumors over the years. One rumor said that the Purple Gang built and operated the Graceland Ballroom in Lupton, Michigan. None of those rumors were true, but the gangster mystique was valuable. And a man named Pastula bought it in the 50s and cashed in on these rumors. He advertised it as a Purple Gang hangout. And he put a mannequin on the balcony with a machine gun. He just made up these things. And by him making these up, it caused even more Purple Gang rumors to be propagated. While putting together his book, Knapp found that he had to separate fact from a lot of fiction especially when it came to the most notorious gangster of all, Chicago's Al Capone. Capone did do a little hunting and fishing in northern Wisconsin, but there are many stories about Capone spending time up north in Michigan and having secret escape tunnels. Knapp says Capone went to Benton Harbor a couple of times, but he never got further north than Lansing. And as for those secret tunnels, Knapp says he never found any. If Al Capone stayed in all the places where people say that he stayed, he would never have had time to be in Chicago. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.